Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson, and today we're gonna to talk about self-doubt and how to stop doubting yourself. I mean, like, do you have those feelings where you say, mm, maybe I'm completely wrong and I'm not being the right person. Maybe I've made a mistake. Maybe I'm not actually trans. Maybe uh, I'm just like pretending to be trans or maybe I just, I don't know if I'm capable of doing this. Like if you have a job, like a self-doubt, like imposter syndrome, like maybe I'm not as good as uh, a designer as I think I am. That's something that I've said before. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. That self-doubt, we're gonna talk about how to conquer that and how to work with that through five points. So um, if this is personal growth, this is personal growth development stuff, and if you're into it, please like and subscribe and check out more of my content. It's all about personal growth with a trans lens under it. Uh, thanks to my Patreon subscribers as well. And if you'd like to support me, I have a book and a meditation series on my website, which you can get. So uh, the first thing to think about with doubt is that doubt is a natural thing and we all do it. Doubt is actually a super important defense mechanism that we have that allows us to try and look at things skeptically so that way we can properly evaluate things without just buying into them. Uh, there are some people that just buy into stuff without uh, doubting things and that often takes a lot of faith and it takes a lot of um, uh, willingness to kind of go that way, which can be sometimes dangerous. Like you think about cults and you think about uh, belief systems that just kind of make these huge jumps. Uh, you could, I mean, there's a lot of modern things that are happening right now with COVID where people are taking belief jumps and uh, things like that, which are, you know, if they had a little bit more doubt around the media and things that they're consuming, it could help them a lot. So there's definitely a lack of doubt in some areas. But doubt is a healthy thing. Doubt is going to help you evaluate truth. Um, so the fact that you're doubting yourself is a good sign. It means that you have a healthy brain in evaluating uh, reality. But when doubt becomes obsessive and when doubt starts to go beyond what is a, a reasonable amount of doubt, I would say, then you have to be asking yourself, like, why are you doubting yourself? Why are you putting so much doubt in your way when you've already set yourself up on this path? For me, that is transitioning. Maybe that's for you. Um, but why did you set yourself up on this path? Uh, do you think that you would typically do something like this? And what is it that is causing you to uh, buy into more of these doubting narratives? Oftentimes, the doubting narrative is fed because you want to protect yourself and you also have fear. I mean, it's the stakes are so high with being trans. I remember thinking to myself like, okay, maybe I'm not trans, maybe I'm just non-binary, maybe I'm not a woman, because the stakes are so high that if I were to accept that I am a woman and to see myself as a woman, then that would mean that I would have to deal with the fact that my body doesn't match being a woman, that the world is not going to accept me because I'm not uh, fitting within the definitions of what a woman should be. And that also means that my entire life, my, my livelihood, my partner, my family, all of these things are now contingent or, or not contingent, but they, they could be potentially lost or completely jeopardized by the fact that I am now a trans woman. So like the stakes are super high. And so doubt can be a really good defensive mechanism to prevent you from actually achieving the thing that you inherently on a much deeper level want, which is to be authentically you and to feel good about being who you are. Like who doesn't wanna feel good about being who they are? If you really like chose this path to feel bad about who you are, then you chose the wrong path because this is about, like there's so many external pressures in being trans, for example, that it's just not a very profitable uh, path to choose if you're just choosing it to make your life harder. You really have to be choosing this because it's going to ultimately make you happier in the long term because you're going to be feeling more authentic in who you are. Now, there's a little separate part there, which is maybe you're still figuring out who you are, you don't know who you are, and that is going to be discovered as you go through this process and discovering who you are and continuing to walk the path that you're setting yourself on. So do not stop, do not doubt that maybe you're on the wrong path. Like if you get enough signals that you are on the wrong path, that's going to be very clear at some point. Maybe there's gonna be things that are blocking your way or that you realize there's something better. It's often better to leave the path when you realize that there's a better destination, a better place to go. But 
committing to the self and committing to your authenticity is a is a long-term unwinding of all of the um, um, uh, structures that your brain has created around your identity. And you need to destructure, deconstruct uh, your identity, how you see yourself, how you interact with yourself, and what relationship you create with yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like the relationship that you have um, as a, as if, you, if you're a cis man, the relationship you have with yourself is under the paradigm of being a cis man. And you have to treat yourself as a cis woman if you're transitioning to being a woman. You have to treat yourself like that. You have to say, you know what, I am a woman and I need to start thinking and believing this and allowing myself to be a woman. Like this is also a habit forming process and it's a long process because your brain has lived under a certain paradigm and that shift takes a lot longer than a few days, even though inherently down to the ground, the bottom or the root of who you are, you may have already discovered that. Does that make sense? So um, the next thing to ask, and uh, maybe like if you, you're not trans or you're not even considering being trans, this question could be repurposed, but I'm gonna say this specifically for trans people. Do you think cis people would come this far in understanding who you are? Like, would you be watching this video uh, this long? Would you have searched this video and watched this video uh, if you were not already trans. And yes, some people may not be trans. So I don't want to say just blanket statement. If you're watching this, you are trans. But most cis people would not go this far in examining their identity and seeing who they are. Uh, you know, you can stay as a cis person, but uh, who like maybe understands their gender more and that's totally fine. But just by this signal of watching this video, searching online, is going to indicate that there's something going on there that is worth doubting. The cis norm is worth doubting. Um, and so how far have you come? And do you think you would have come this far if you were actually just cis and that was it? I have doubted myself into my transition with hormones, but you know, I keep returning to why am I doing this? Why have I come this far? Because there's a part of me that feels joy and happiness in being authentically like this. And all I need to do is I need to continue to build on those feelings and let go of all the doubt, let go of all the parts of the things that invalidate me. And so that's something that I want you to look at is finding all those parts of you that invalidate you and realize that you can replace those in the long term with better, more positive, uh, self-forming habits that are built around um, affirming your gender. It's sort of like building a castle. You have to, um, your castle is you and you need to defend yourself from your doubt. And the best way to do that is to start building up walls and to start building up defenses, which is like positive self-talk, getting rid of the negativity that's in your life and around you and really placing up boundaries to protect yourself and to support yourself. Um, so then, the next thing to ask is, uh, you know, if you could be whoever you want to be, um, who would you be? This is like one of the most powerful things that you can do because when you when you think about who you can be without any constraints, you can naturally visualize what you want to be without any constraints, and then you'll see how you feel, how you feel in receiving this visualization. So we can do this really shortly right now. Just close your eyes for a second, and I'll ask you the question. Imagine yourself as who you are without any constraints, without anyone else knowing, without any fears or any things that would stop you from being who you want to be. How would you be? What would you look like? How would you feel in your body? What would your body look like? How would you be thinking? How would you be treating yourself? How would you be looking at yourself in the mirror? How do you feel when you see this person? How does that feel? That feeling that you have is resonating with your innate knowing, the innate being that is within you. This will work for you. This is the magic of really uncovering and committing to yourself. It's finding that within you that just knows, that knows that this is the thing that you want and you want to be. For me, this more recent thing has been coming to the acceptance of wanting and to have a vagina, wanting to have a vagina, because cognitively, I don't feel like I need that. But every time I visualize myself 
with different genitals, um, this, this happiness and this sense of, of, of completeness emerges. And so I know deep within me in coming down this path already, that this is a good guide for knowing your, your decisions. I use that same indication for imagining myself as a woman and seeing that outcome too. So this is a super powerful visualization exercise. The last question, number five, um, is, is doubting, doubting yourself serving your best interests? This is kind of like taking a step back and saying, okay, so now you know how you feel about how you could be in the most ideal situation, and you've kind of questioned the fact that you've made it this far compared to what other cis people are having to do. And you've also acknowledged that perhaps the doubt you're using is a tool for defense, for protecting yourself, or maybe getting, getting fear out of the way. So, um, you know, is doubt really serving you? How much do you really want it to serve you? What's the benefits of having it? Can you just let it go? Can you cast it out? Every time that belief comes up, can you say, you know what, it's not a valid belief because I'm already steadfast and moving in the direction that feels right to me. So um, also if you'd like help in this, I have a book on my website and I also have the Embracing Femininity program if you're a trans woman or you're a woman who wants to embrace her femininity more. Thank you for joining me. I am supported by my patrons. I make these videos for free. Please support me on Patreon if you'd like to see more of these videos and you'd also like to interact with me more. I'll see you in another episode soon. Bye.